Lockerbie, thank you so much. Keep in mind here, part two does air tonight. Tune into my Fox Carolina's primetime for the follow-up there. Now, the details surrounding the former CMS superintendent's exit getting more confusing. Some teachers and faculty shocked to hear of Dr. Heath Morrison's resignation, especially at a time when teachers say they were starting to feel like they were really respected by their leader. But rumors have been circulating. Fox 46 has learned now that some employees made allegations that Morrison was verbally abusive. Eric Davis, a member of the school board says claims, uh, excuse me, claims rather that the right steps were not taken leading up to Morrison's resignation. In a statement, he told us that he voted against the separation agreement because he disagreed with the manner in which the board handled the situation. For more on this, let's toss it over to Eric. Let's bring in Matt Fleischman. He's an attorney with Rosenstiel Fleischman in uh, Charlotte. Join us to talk about this. There's so many layers to this story, Matt. Uh, you know, he, he could have a lawsuit here, could he not? Because people are talking when they're not supposed to be talking about this whole thing. Uh, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. So, you know, there's been talk about the, the district attorney getting involved or at least one of the school board members wanting the DA to get involved. I, I do think it's highly unlikely. I think if anything, you, uh, you, you're exposing uh, the board to a risk of a civil lawsuit yeah. uh, based on some of these leaks. How do you, let's say, let's just take this and go civil lawsuit because let's say Heath Morrison can't get a job and he's later down the road, he's saying, I want to sue because they have defamed me. They have said these things that aren't true and who knows what they are or not. How do you even go about that? Because that's, that's difficult if you go to civil court to, to find out who who's actually leaking this stuff, isn't it? Well, that's, that's very true. So, I mean, you've got a number of issues that you have if you were the plaintiff in these types of cases. So basically, your, your argument is that you've been slandered and because of this, it has affected your ability for gainful employment, you've lost income, et cetera, et cetera. Um, obviously, you would, you would file suit. You, mm -hmm. would, you would bring a claim and, and claim that these are the damage that you have suffered. Um, whether you can prove any of that is a whole other story. And whether that's actually the reason why uh, you've, uh, you've not been able to gain employment is an issue as well. The, you know, truth is the ultimate defense to a, sl yeah. a slander or a liable lawsuit. How, the longer that he stays out of work, is, is that part of this? Because, you, you know, you see it, people start to get desperate. Maybe he does. I don't, we don't know what the real story is. That's the thing that's intriguing about this. Why he really left? Was he forced out? What, did he do something that was illegal? Uh, you know, is, the, is that play into this, you know, desperation? From the plaintiff standpoint, it does. And I will tell you that, that you know, the, the more desperate people get, the harder it is to, to counsel them to say, listen, the risk uh, to you right. is if, uh, if there was something Something nefarious that took place that's going to come out okay so if you're if you're the attorney for the plaintiff you have to explain yes you can sue and yes you have the the possibility of monetary gain however there could be more risk to your reputation, et cetera, if other things uh, surface during the course of litigation. Now, we, we often hear that, uh, you know, like you said, you open up the can of worms, right? Uh, you know, the truth is out there and someone knows what it is. Uh, do you think, this is, this is away from legal, I guess I just want your opinion here, uh, him stepping down, it seems kind of odd. If you hadn't done anything that was, you know, so bad that you needed to step down, would someone step down? I know this is a beyond the legal thing, but you know, that's, that's the intriguing part of this. Why would you step down unless you had done something that maybe you needed to? Um, I think that's a you know, very good point. Yeah. You, know, you don't know whether he had a, a, a bigger deal, a better job down the road that he was trying to get out of this contract. Uh -huh. there's, um, some of that. Yeah. there's a possibility of that. Certainly there's a possibility of that something nefarious was going on. I, I tend to believe it's not criminal in nature. Otherwise, right. I think the school board would have a, a responsibility and obligation to bring that to the district attorney. That has not happened yet because if something like that had happened and there's a quote-unquote Cover up, mm -hmm. then there would be another lawsuit again from that that victim oh. of uh, of the super, of, of uh, um, Morrison. So yeah. You know, so you can go down the rabbit hole if you want, that's, but, yeah, you, know. you could not like uh, where it ends up. Exactly. Matt Fleischman, great stuff as always. Really appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Uh, on the way here, uh, we're going to talk about Bakari Savage. He's uh, got a very controversial worksheet. Uh, and, Matt, you're going to weigh in on this. It's about teaching Islam uh, in Union County. This uh, worksheet, is it is it leaning one way or another? Does it break religion uh, being taught in schools and public schools? Matt will weigh in on all that here shortly coming up at 7.30.